In this video, we will cover the steps used when reporting advancing care information. To view the advancing care information report, click on the Reports drop-down menu in the top left of the TrackNet application and select Advancing Care Information. Once on the report screen, you can choose a provider to run the report for and select the date range for the report. Executing the Advancing Care Information Report on the Summary tab will display your current status for all measures. You can also run a detailed report for each measure by clicking the Details tab on the report screen and selecting the desired measure. The detailed report will give you a breakdown of what patients qualify for the denominator and what patients are included in the numerator. The first measure in the report is a security risk analysis. To complete this measure, the clinician must conduct or review a security risk analysis in accordance with the requirements, including addressing the security to include encryption of electronic patient health information data created or maintained by a certified electronic health record technology in accordance with the requirements and implement security updates as necessary and correct identified security deficiencies as part of the MIPS eligible clinicians risk management process. To meet this measure, eligible clinicians must conduct a security risk analysis and implement any necessary security updates identified in that risk analysis. We recommend working with HIPAA Secure Now or TLD Systems and a link for HIPAA Secure Now and an email for TLD Systems can be found in the description of this video. Electronic Prescribing For this measure, at least one permissible prescription written by the MIPS eligible clinician is queried for a drug formulary and transmitted electronically using a certified electronic health records technology. To complete this measure, on the patient chart, click the RX button in the top middle of the page or click the RX button in the top of the patient encounter. Here, you will see a list of medications that have been previously prescribed in TrackNet. Click the Prescribe button to begin writing the prescription. Once you have clicked Prescribe, the Medications and Allergy screen will appear. Click the Next button in the top left of the screen to move to the Select Medication tab. On the Select Medication tab, you may select a medication from the Favorites tab or search for the medication on the Medications tab. Once you have selected your medication, click Next again to move to the Prescription Writer tab. Here, you'll need to fill out the Dispense and SIG fields and verify the remaining information in the required section. To send the prescription electronically, you'll need to select a pharmacy in the e-prescribing section. In this section, click the field next to pharmacy and then click the small box with the three dots. This will bring up the pharmacy selection screen. Here, you can choose the pharmacy from one of four tabs. The patient favorites, which is a list of the patient's pharmacies. My favorites, which is a list of the pharmacies most frequently used by the practice. SureScripts, which allows you to search for pharmacies by name or by location, or the Mail Order tab. Once you have selected the pharmacy and all of the information is correct, click the Next button to be taken to the confirmation screen. On this screen, you are able to review all the information for the prescription, and to send the prescription electronically, click the Send button in the upper left area of the screen. Health Information Exchange for this measure, the MIPS eligible clinician that transfers or refers their patient to another setting of care or healthcare clinician uses certified electronic health record technology to create a summary of care record and electronically transmits such summary to a receiving healthcare clinician for at least one transition of care or referral. The first step in completing this measure is to fax a summary of care record to the receiving provider. Once you have sent the summary of care, the second step is to create a record of sending the summary in TrackNet. To do this, click on Actions on the Patient's Chart and select Referrals. On this screen, click the Add button. This will bring up the Patient Referrals screen. Enter the referring provider, set the order type to Outgoing, 
and select True for Referral Summary Provided and Referral Summary Provided Electronically. Verify all the information is accurate and then click the Save button to complete this measure. Patient Access At least one patient seen by the MIPS eligible clinician during the performance period is provided timely access to view online, download, and transmit to third party their health information subject to the MIPS eligible clinician's discretion to withhold certain information. Patient Education the MIPS eligible clinician must use clinically relevant information from certified electronic health record technology to identify patient-specific educational resources and provide access to those materials to at least one unique patient seen by the MIPS eligible clinician. Please note, these two measures are completed together in the TrackNet application. Once you have completed and signed the patient encounter, there are two ways to send the patient their Summary of Care document, or CCDA. The first way is from the patient's chart using the CCDA button located just below and to the right of the patient's name. The letters of this button will turn red when the patient is eligible and their encounter qualifies for this measure. Clicking this button will automatically send the default CCDA summary and education links to the Health Vault patient portal. The second way you can send a CCDA to the patient is through the Patient Engagement button located in the bottom right corner of TrackNet. The border of this button will turn red when the patient is eligible and the encounter qualifies for this measure. On the Patient Engagement screen, you can select a different CCDA from the template drop-down menu and make any changes to the document if needed. Patient education links will be added to the bottom of the document you have selected to be sent with the CCDA. Once you are ready to send the document, click on Actions in the top right of the screen and select Send to Patient Portal. This will send the CCDA selected as well as patient education links which are automatically added to the CCDA. Please note, to send the patient an electronic CCDA, the patient must have a valid email address and it is recommended to send a CCDA for every visit. Upon sending the CCDA, both the CCDA button and the Patient Engagement button should return to normal indicating that this measure was successfully completed. View, Download, and Transmit For this measure, at least one patient seen by the MIPS eligible clinician during the performance period or patient authorized representative views, downloads, or transmits their health information to a third party during the performance period. To complete this measure, at least one patient will need to click on the link in the email sent to them from the Health Vault patient portal. Once taken to the Health Vault webpage, the patient will then either log in or create a new account and view the message that was sent to them. Secure Messaging For this measure, at least one patient seen by the MIPS eligible clinician during the performance period a secure message was sent using the electronic messaging function of the Certified Electronic Health Records Technology to the patient or in response to a secure message sent by the patient during the performance period. To complete this measure, at least one patient will need to send a secured electronic message to the practice's direct email address located on the Inbox tab. The easiest way to do this is for the patient to reply to a CCDA they have received through their Health Vault patient portal account. Once the patient has sent a secured message to TrackNet, it will show in the Inbox tab on the left-hand side of TrackNet. Click on the Inbox tab to access the Inbox. Once on the Inbox tab, select the email received from the patient and select the Import Message to Patient Chart button. This will bring up a patient search window. Here, you can search for and select the patient who sent the message and click the Import to Patient Chart button in the bottom of the window. This will place the message under the Secure Messages tab on the patient's chart and complete the requirements for this measure. Medication Reconciliation for this measure, the MIPS eligible clinician performs medication reconciliation for at least one transition of care in which the patient is transitioned into the care of the MIPS eligible clinician. To complete this measure, first complete and document a medication reconciliation. 
After completing the medication reconciliation, it can be recorded by clicking the Actions on the patient's chart and selecting Referrals from the drop-down menu. On the Referrals screen, click the Add button. This will bring up the Patient Referral screen. Here, you must select the referring provider, set the order type to Incoming, and set the medication reconciliation and new patient fields to True. Once you have done this, review the information to make sure it is accurate and click the Save button to complete the measure. Specialized Registry For this measure, the MIPS eligible clinician is an active engagement to submit data to a specialized registry. To complete this measure, the clinician must sign up with a specialized registry and be an active engagement with the registry. To create the CCDA documents needed for reporting to registries, click the Reports drop-down menu in the top left of the TRACnet application and select Specialized Registries. Once on the Specialized Registry screen, set the filters for the appropriate providers, facilities, date, and encounter status. Enter the ICD-10 codes to search for and click Search. Select the encounters to export and click Export by selecting each individually or using the Select All option. Please note that if you are working with MedExpress, you may select this from the Registry drop-down and then select the registry type you are reporting for to automatically select the ICD-10 codes. You are also able to directly upload the selected encounters to MedExpress using the Upload button. This concludes our video tutorial on advancing care information Please refer to the description of this video for a link to the written guide that outlines these steps and thank you for watching.